U.S. and China issue joint climate pledge. The joint pledge. The U.S. and China jointly pledge to tackle climate change through mutual and international cooperation. This came at the end of U.S. Special Presidential Envoy for Climate John Kerry's visit to Shanghai, where he met with his counterparts, Chinese Special Envoy on Climate Change Xie Zhenhua. The visit is a rare display of solidarity between the two superpowers, as both nations have been increasingly falling out over issues such as Taiwan, Hong Kong, and Xinjiang as of late. The visit is also crucially the first high-level visit to China by an official from the Biden administration. Kerry stated clearly that he viewed the life-threatening danger posed to all by climate change to take priority over any disputes that the U.S. has with China. The previous 2015 Paris Climate Agreement had also been previously sealed with the involvement of both Kerry and Xie. A good omen. China and the US are the world's top two greenhouse gas polluters, contributing to almost half of all carbon emissions. Any progress on climate change must hence have them at the negotiating table. The joint statement issued by both countries bodes well for the upcoming Earth Day summit hosted by US President Joe Biden, which will be attended by Chinese President Xi Jinping. Singaporean Prime Minister Lee Hsien Loong is among the 40 world leaders also attending this summit. The United Nations has drawn attention to the fact that the current national pledges are unable to meet the Paris Climate Agreement, keeping global warming to at most 1.5 degrees Celsius. The US had previously, under the Trump administration, withdrawn from the Paris Climate Agreement, hurting the image of America overseas. The US, under the Biden administration, has been eager to recoup the trust of its foreign partners, with Biden rejoining the Paris Climate Agreement via executive order on the first day of office. Biden is also expected to announce a new and significantly more ambitious pledge to cut greenhouse gases this week. China, on the other hand, has not indicated when or if it will announce a new pledge for the Paris Climate Agreement. It additionally has not explained how it would be able to meet its goal of net zero emissions by 2060, considering that it is and will likely be heavily dependent on coal. China is the world's top coal consumer, relying on coal for much of its energy needs. Greenpeace, an environmental group, proposed that China start by banning coal financing and implementing an absolute carbon target. CE is expected to review more details during the Boao um, Asia Forum this week. Both nations expressed their intentions to develop long-term strategies to achieve net zero emissions and carbon neutrality in time for the COP26 United Nations Climate Ch Summit in Glasgow. In the meanwhile, they promised to finance green energy initiatives in developing countries and curb the manufacture of hydrofluorocarbons, present in refrigerators, air conditioners and aerosols, due to their harmful effects on the ozone layer. Boao Asia Forum begins. An international forum. The 20th high-level Boao Forum for Asia began yesterday in Hainan, China. This forum has been uh, postponed from last year due to the pandemic, and this year's forum comes with strict virus control measures, forcing most foreign leaders to attend virtually. However, 2,600 delegates will still attend in person, making this the largest in-person international conference this year. The Boao Forum focuses on international cooperation, bringing together top Chinese and international leaders to discuss economic and policy concerns. This includes leaders such as the Chinese Central Bank Governor Yi Kang, Chinese Min Finance Minister Liu Kun, International Monetary Fund Managing Director Kristalina Georgieva, and World Trade Organization Director General Ngozi Okojo Iwala. Most importantly, Singaporean speakers will be present, including President Halima Yaakob, 
former prime uh, f- uh former foreign minister George Yeo, former deputy prime minister Wong Kan Sing, uh Central Providence Fund chief executive Augustine Lee, and Asia Research Institute's professor Kishore M- Mubu Bani. The key theme this year is sustainable development, with the usual emphasis on multilateralism, with Asia expected to drive the global economic recovery. Many nations have experienced widening developmental gaps due to the pandemic. The forum will serve to address the negative impacts of the pandemic, the four developmental deficits, health, infrastructure, green, and digital deficits, as well as a lack of global governance to find cooperative solutions. The forum will push for vaccinations to be prioritized, exchange of health data, and for Asian countries to engage in experience sharing and capacity building with other developing nations.